everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I want to talk about hack and slash the comic book characters of Casey and Vlad, or more importantly, where the fuck is the movie and the television show we were told that was coming out a while back that we never got to see. And first off, I love this series. They are probably my top five easily, easily. I couldn't find better characters if I tried in this type of horror genre because they're they're awesome they're amazing and we was told a while back they're supposed to be in a show uh there was a broadway show i think or some kind of play that made i never saw it but there was advertising that seemed comic about a movie or a television show never got to see it so what the hell happened well before we get in there let me do a brief history of this for to catch some people up who have no idea who these characters are which is a real shame uh, I will try to keep it brief, and also I will leave a link below to a YouTuber who did a actually in-depth history of hers. So if you want to go more in-depth, knock yourself out, there's a link. And with that said, let's get started. Back in 2004, this guy Tim Seeley came up with his characters, and I believe it's through the publication, I think it was Devil's Due or something like that, a small-time publications, and it's like limited series and such. And... I picked it up basically later on when it came out in 2010 or 2011, I think it's 2010, when they went over to Image Comics. But what the story is about is you have a teenage girl named Casey Hack, uh, kind of an outcast, wears glasses, long hair, smart, kind of nerdy, uh, kids pick on her, and you got her mother, she's a lunchroom lady there. Well, her mother is very protective of daughter and a little bit overprotective. She basically, I ain't no base too, she just, if she thought she was messing with her daughter, you were fixing to be killed and you were served on the menu for that evening. Uh, the mystery meat, as they call it. Well, she gets found out by the police and rather go in jail, she just go ahead and commit suicide and buries her face in some hot soup or whatever it is and killed herself. And, of course, this mess with her daughter, Casey. Casey goes to another place. Uh, I believe it was all pro uh, girl school. I think is what it was, or maybe in co -ed, I don't remember. But anyway, while she's there, her mother doesn't die. In this world, this is where you have what's called slashers. I think of Freddy, Jason, Michael, all that stuff. You die, you you come back to life. Now, this ain't everybody. This is, you know, like just certain individuals. They come back to life. They're a lot harder, stronger to kill. They may have a power, uh, vengeful rave, ghost, whatever you want to call it. But they're back to kill. And her mother comes back, nicknamed the lunchroom lady, goes on a killing spree, starts killing everybody in her school. And, of course, eventually, Casey being the final girl, comes up, has to kill her mom. And after this incident, Casey changes her parent. More gothic, uh, badass attitude, everything changed for her. And she just goes out and starts hunting these slashers. Along the way, she runs into her partner, Vlad. And Vlad's an interesting character. The best way to describe Vlad is, think of a weaker Jason Voorhees, about how to describe it. Vlad, now, he's not by, a wimp by any chance, don't get me wrong. He's very powerful. He is a slasher. He is a good slasher, though. Uh... Vlad's story is a little sad. He, the way Vlad told Casey was when he was a baby, he was found in the local dumps, uh, trash can. The local butcher took him in, taught him to read through comics, uh, gave him two big cleaver knives, even taught him how to be a butcher. Uh, unfortunately, the butcher did pass away. I don't remember if he got killed or he it was old age. I don't remember, but he left Vlad by himself. And Vlad and Casey were both hunting the same serial killer. and. That's how they kind of met and hooked up. Now, Vlad's not very bright. He's, like I said, he's more of a Jason Voorhees, but he, he's a brute, and he's very protective of Casey. And she cares about him a lot, too. Uh, every once in a while, you'll have some humor between where Casey will pick up on, pick on Vlad, or Vlad will actually pick on her every once in a while. So it, that's part of the humor and the charm of the actual comic itself and these two characters. So these characters drove around the country looking for killers, slashers, investigating things, kind of like Supernatural with Dean and his brother. And when they investigate, 
a lot of times I find a slasher that had been doing this and take them out. Now, sometimes there wasn't a slasher. A lot of things were around the 80s slasher type movies. Uh, there was even one about a pet cemetery type theme, which was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed that story. And But they had a ton of original characters. Later on, as popularity grew, you see them hook up with Chucky, uh, Ash, Hell the Crow, uh, what was a reanimator from the older ones. Uh, Chaos Comics with Evil Ernie, Chastity, Purgatory, uh, Pamparella, that was another one. Hell, there was even one where here's Dexter trying to take out Jason, which that didn't work out too well. Look who shows up. Max Flash. The cool thing is, with Casey especially, she's this tough, badass girl. Just gives a, give her a baseball bat, she just whoop your ass. And tough as nails. But you'd see moments in the story where you would get to see the, you know, how she, you see this, the outcast little girl from school still there. And even when she her, she had killed her mother, she still had regrets. She had a big fear if she'd ever died, she'd come back as a slasher like her mom and ask Vlad to make sure you kill her. Which Vlad's like, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, fear, you know, she'd have fear of being alone because she was out. I mean, you know, she wanted intimacy, all this stuff. I mean, it, it dealt with a lot of emotions in this comic. You And you actually got best invested in this character and Vlad as well. So, like I said, the story was fantastic. Loved stories. Made only sense. Why not put this into, a, you know, a television show or something? It'd be greater a movie. So back in 2015, I'd remember this article about uh, the gentleman, who, the person that had done a good day to die, I think one of the Dower movies, it's interesting, like a live action adaptation of it. And it's been a television, which I think would make a great television series, like I said, about the stories. Um, just never happened. So I was like, well, what the hell? So back in 2021, 20, uh, back in February, uh, this was published by Jason Jenkins on Bloody Disgusting. And they had a little interview with Tim Seeley and Todd Lincoln uh, talking about the film they had wanted to make. And this is one long story, guys. I won't bore you and go down the whole thing because there was like, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, some of the interesting things are here is about what they had planned to do. Uh, apparently there was a couple drafts where even Vlad wasn't in it, which I kind of shocked uh, they had wanted to put Chucky in it. Uh, they were talking about using, not the Hollywood sets, but using uh, like your suburban. Because in their world, you know, places like Crystal Lake, uh, Haddonfield, Elm Street, all this existed. So they wanted to use this stuff to make it more scary. But it was apparently it was more nightmare after nightmare. The, the 2015 series didn't go through because apparently during that time the budget and everything to make a show that was real true to the comic just wasn't there. It had to be more of a movie so that's why in a nutshell that fell through. And as you can see this went on for a long time this whole article but they're talking about all the headaches dealing with Hollywood. Uh, yes there's some Politics near with the woke community and all that stuff, whether you're part of it or not. And honestly, I'm not a big fan of woke community. I like my characters. Quit messing with them. Uh, you can sit there. We even plan to bring in Tom Zinni as a kill uh, consultant. That would have been awesome. But all this stuff, just, you know, they couldn't get it done. They couldn't get on the same page with Hollywood producers, which, if anybody's seen anything with Hollywood, you know they're a nightmare. But. It, it, that's what it is. So take a little insert from down there at the bottom. Sela had this to say about where the project stands now. He doesn't know. I got an email at least once a week from directors, actors, talent agencies. They're always interested. Seems like that would be enough, I guess. There are people out there that want to do it. I just don't know what the political situation and the legal situation with it is right now pre-pandemic. I had just had conversations about getting it going again and writing a treatment and all that sort of stuff after the pandemic. 
Hollywood got very worried about it. Is it worth it to pursue something? Is it more valuable not to? Seems to me part of the way things have shifted in the last number of months, and that is from an outsider, is that there's less value in making things more value and holding on to assets. I think the studio approach is studio approach to this now is let's just own a bunch of stuff. It's like having stocks, making things, creating things, working. It's not valuable. But having assets, collecting stuff, that is valuable again. It's the ultimate capitalist hellscape, and it seems like Hack and Slash is wrapped up in it. So after reading that little excerpt from this article, and like I said, you really should read this article. You'll see all the stuff they he planned, him and uh, was it Todd Lincoln, they planned to put in this movie that they wanted to do that never got made, even with the television show. It never got made once again. But you can tell he's frustrated. He's irritated. Like, okay, we'll do it, but, well, I'm not running out with all this going on. Well, maybe we should just wait. We'll hold on to it. And it sucks. It really does. Especially the timing right now, because you got to look. Halloween's coming out. Uh, I believe Scream, the new Scream's supposed to be coming out pretty soon. Hell, even Chucky's got a television series coming out, which actually looks really good, surprisingly, for a television series. And, like I said before, this really should be more of a television series, not a movie. And the reason why is because I don't think in two and a half hours you will get the full story or get as invested in Casey and Vlad as you would from a television series, if done right. And... With the way television is nowadays, hell, make it bloody. Go for it. You can do a slasher. Hell, they had Scream the Television series. They even had a series called Slasher. Put it on Netflix. I don't care. But it can be done right. And I don't know. Maybe when all this COVID's over and all this pandemic stuff, maybe, maybe something will happen. That'd be nice. Uh... If you have never read this, my advice to you, there is Omnis Books, which is a collection. Go get chapter one. Go get the first one. There's quite a few in there. I uh, promise you won't be disappointed. Good character. And I can't say enough praise about this. This is an exceptionally good comic. Alrighty, guys. I definitely have rambled on enough. Thank you for listening and putting up my rambles. But I love this comic, and I... Really wanted to see it made into a live action. So I thought I'd put this up here for you guys. And I am going to cut it off right here. Hopefully you all will have a good day tomorrow. And I will see you all in the next video.